<laughs> okay. Well, that was enough. Alright, so here's our tenor part for the opener in fight. Um, I'll give you a little disclaimer whenever you're learning these tenor parts and whenever you're learning uh, anything on the tenors, exercises, parts, anything, you always want to start on drum one first, right? We need to get our hands and we need to get the right rhythms and techniques before you worry about orchestrating it around the drums, okay? It's the golden rule. So if you can't play it on one drum, you can't play it on five. So remember that. So um, you want to take a little bit, a couple measures, a measure or two, learn it on one drum, and then start orchestrating it around, okay? Another thing to remember with tenors is you want to go pretty close to the tempo. Um, if you're doing a roll at 60, it is not going to help you with your roll at 160, okay? It's really two different techniques. I mean, it's very important to be able to play it slow, but it's also very important to play it in the tempo. So as soon as you get an idea of it, start putting it together fast. Because if you sh show up to rehearsal with B, you know, B, A, uh, B1, 2, and 3 at 40, <laughs> it's not going to help us very much because the rest of the course, uh, band's going to be playing at, uh, you know, 140. So think about that. And then the other thing to think about is uh, we're going to be going a uh, phrase at a time. So we want to use those rehearsal letters I gave you, the B1, the B2, the B3. We want to make sure that we use those to our advantage. That The whole point of me putting in putting those in there was to divide the music up into bite-sized sections. All right? So we're going to be taking, especially for the tenors, like one drum at, uh, one measure at a time, learning it, and then orchestrating it. Okay? So this video doesn't really show you how you should practice, it's just going to give you a couple ideas on some of the harder parts. So make sure you're practicing correctly, one or two measures at a time, then putting those measures together. Okay? So here's B1. We start at 144, and we're going to do this. Those two bars would be good to learn. That's a paradiddle diddle diddle thing on bar 11. So I would do that until you could do that easily, and then orchestrate. Okay. Uh, that should take you through a lot of the B1, because the next part is... Again, if you're not hit to paradiddle diddles, now would be the time. So we're going to learn it on the one drum, and then move it around. Okay. So on B1, make sure you pay attention to measures 11 and measures 13. Um, so work out that technique, make sure you can do that very evenly on one drum, and then move it around the drums. Okay? B2, you don't have too much to do, we have that 5-8 section there. And it works in the metronome over 4, so put your metronome on regular and it'll sound like this. practice that. Um, B3 is a little bit of a drum feature, so we're going to have uh, a, lot of, a lot of notes. We have that pair to the diddle thing again, so make sure you're good with that. And then add that with the measure before, so measure 20 and 21. Bar 22 and 23 are pretty easy. And that bar 23 is a theme. Ooh, word of the day. The theme is something that we're going to do over and over. It kind of ties the whole piece together. So when you look at uh, your letter E to the end, it's going to be a lot of that. So make sure you have that, good, have that done well. Really staccato. Really hold the sticks deep, uh, strong and play deep into the drum. And then bar 24 is, oops. yeah, we're going to end down, so practice getting used to that. Yeah. The diamonds are crossovers, so if you see that on the third beat, the last note of 24, that's what that means. You'll be seeing those a lot, so get used to that. Yeah. Here we are at C, well that's supposed to be C1, I don't know what happened there. It disappeared on my music. Well, 25 is C1. Um, C1 is a bass drum and tenor feature, so make sure you uh, pay a lot of attention to this, because this one is this is pretty hard. 
Let me explain it. Um, it's a pattern that we move around the drum a lot. So you can kind of catch that it's a pattern. But that pattern changes a little bit whenever it's in five, because the pattern works really well in three. But sometimes it's in five, so we take out that crossover. Okay? So just remember to um, really catch the pattern to that part and then put it together with that. Alright? So. Uh, I guess the best way to practice that would be to practice the 3-4. Yep. <laughs> so, I would say do that a lot, and then work out the rest of uh, the C, the section C. Okay? There's a couple things at the end, the measure 39 and 40 are the only variation in C. So good. Well, that's the double right on that triplet. Okay. So C is basically a big asinata that we play a lot of, uh, a lot over and over, and then we end it with that little pattern. Out. D1 and D2 are snare feature type things, so you don't have to worry about that. Enjoy. I do want visuals there, so if you can think of any cool things to do with sticks, that'd be great. But D3 is your tenor feature, and it's a split tenor feature. So, part of the day number two is split. That means we have two different parts. So, tenor one and tenor two are playing two different things. So, I'll play both of them for you, maybe, and see if you could, you could decide which one's better for you, and then hopefully you two can put it together. So, here's tenor one. Tenor two is this. Oop. Let me start there again. Oop. Oh, yeah, yeah, I didn't quite extend it to you very much. Well, you're going to. So let me break this down for you. Well, I'm not even going to really break it down so much. Just notice that the crossovers are um, are back and forth. So one person has a crossover, then the next person is going to cross over on their leg. So it kind of goes back and forth with crossovers. So be really careful with that. Um, the best advice on this is go one bar at a time. So really work on the first measure. Make sure everything's strong. Do that like ten times. So make sure you can get each one of those measures, and then start putting it together, okay? Uh, it would take me about 10 minutes to explain it all, it's just as easy for you to just go through it like that, okay? D4, we go back to that pattern. It's not too hard. From here on out, it's not that hard. I made it purposely hard in the middle, because, or purposely that one hard section for you, so we could chop out at the end, okay? E1. Same as E2, so you play that again. Just remember that we have that pattern uh, theme again, and we want to play really down into the drum. Really hold the sticks tight. It's not too open. It's not too up. Okay. Using a lot of arms. See how my arms get away from the drum? About six inches high. Okay. E3. Um, make sure you count your rests, and make sure you count your rests for everything, especially at C1 and D1. Make sure you're counting all that stuff, because without counting, then you're going to just be guessing when to come in, and that will work sometimes. We need to work every time. So E3 is this. Two, three, two. Oh, that's okay. So the parts, if you break them all down, aren't really too hard. It doesn't take too much to learn a section, but the part, the hard part is going to be putting it all together. So, take your time, work out your sections at home, and then we'll be putting it all together at rehearsals. Thank you much. Enjoy.